Good morning, everyone. Sam here. Let's get started. Good to be with you. And uh, we've got lots to go over. So, you know, as the week goes along, we will be able to um, uh, you know, build and share and build and share um, should be a uh, anyway good week. Good week being together and continuing to uh, move together. All right, again, great to see everybody. So, as you see on the screen, today we will um, continue our little lesson on location. We talked about that yesterday. Supply, demand, and the middle. And uh, how do I, most importantly, how to identify each and what to do in uh, each of those areas. Talk uh, about that session guide just uh, for a few minutes, and then we'll dive into the market fo focus as of this morning. And then Jasmine will take over and walk us through a bunch of markets. And... Um, and uh, you know, uh, probably starting tomorrow, I'll do, I'll do some of that also. So Jasmine does an amazing job, and uh, let's keep going. Uh, tomorrow, though, we're going to focus on two big things: news and price. And this is uh, so. So after we get through kind of a little bit more of location and structure and all that, we'll go over that in just a few minutes. We're going to cover news and price tomorrow, and what a uh, fantastic and completely misunderstood relationship that is in the uh, in the financial markets. Um, we're also going to cover uh, the stock portfolio, so the model stock portfolio. Um, how many people here in our group, um, you know, have been taking positions in the uh, model portfolio that I've been driving uh, with you since, you know, early March? Uh, people with us here today that uh, are, are, are uh, aware of the portfolio and maybe in positions in that portfolio? That's a question because then I'll know how deep to go into it. Anyway, we've got some updates. I didn't want to just kind of leave you hanging, so we'll go over those updates tomorrow. We've got a couple of, uh, more positions nearing profit targets, but we'll see. We'll also do our market focus and then um, trading and analysis in the markets. Okay. Okay, great. So... Uh, definitely tomorrow we're going to do a pretty big update. There's some some new stuff to go over, and um, uh, we'll we'll go over a lot of those positions. And of course, our thought of the day: if you want to find happiness at a whole new level, start noticing the little things in life. One day you'll realize they were actually the big things. How true is that? You know, as you uh, obviously as you get older, you really realize that. Uh, you know, money and things and items and <clears throat> all the all the shiny objects in life were kind of just that shiny objects. It's the uh, the walk in the park with with your loved one and the uh, maybe sitting outside with your dog and all that other stuff. Yes, sir. Ht. Um, we will. Uh, I do have Nifty in big letters. We will cover Nifty also tomorrow. I uh, wanted to get that in today, but uh, I didn't. I didn't find uh, the right chart, so I don't have a nifty feed. But it's fine. Um, I'll. Uh, I have plenty of um, plenty of ways to get a really good chart. So we will cover nifty tomorrow as well. And then I want to point your eyes to one more thing on the screen here, and then we will move forward. Okay. And now you know I, I am uh, glancing at the chat and trying to respond to some of that. I don't see much of it, so really, you know, kind of just focus on what I'm uh, here to share with you. Uh, but you can always reach out. I'm sure uh, someone can give you an email address there or whatever there. Yeah, exactly, Kyle. Most important things are not okay. Exactly. So I want to point out one thing in the bottom right corner: one strategy, any market. Stocks, futures, forex, real estate, crypto—you know, uh, you name it. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, the one strategy, though. So one of the challenges that uh, people seem to have, and and I'm you know I'm constantly interacting with with uh, with with people on this is they're maybe confused on strategy, or 
um, some component of strategy or what have you. And when I dive in just even for a few minutes at the, at the surface level, it's very clear that they're trying to make a, a number of things work or just confused on basic strategy. And and usually they they have a com, you know, one of their comments is, well, you know, I learned this from this person and that from that person and all that. And whoever you decide to, you know, learn from or what have you, or forget even that, but whatever strategy you decide to go with, one of the things that um, one of one of the things that can um, that's really important, at least again, this is just my opinion, of course, is that you focus on that strategy, right? So, like for Jasmine and I, it is really one strategy and one simple set of rules, right? Uh, not necessarily easy to execute emotionally, but it is one set of rules, and there are many variations of even that set of rules that I see out there. People have all kinds of interpretations that they've got from, for all kinds of reasons, but the, the, the focus needs to be whatever you're doing, you know, try to focus on that. And before you put any actual money at risk in the markets on that, make sure you've proven to yourself that it works, right? Just glancing at the chat here. Um, right. So Adam, you know, um, I'm just reading back. Yes, fulfillment cannot be bought. Absolutely. Um, how true is that? The strategy uh, is okay, but which zone or formation to look for? Yeah. So again, it's 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 um, you know, we just need to go over some of that stuff. Exactly. All right. So let's dive in a little bit deeper. Um, you know, because I I I see, for example, like for Jasmine and I, you know, the the strategy. Um, you know, I was on the I was on the trading floor at Chicago Mercantile Exchange many many years ago, and you know that's where I developed the the, the supply demand strategy and um, and I've seen over the years people have taken you know a very basic simple set of rules that Jasmine and I still focus on today and added all kinds of things to it and completely overcomplicated it it and 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 all this other stuff. And, um, you know, it, it changes everything. So whatever you decide to do, uh, my point is make sure, you know, the more that you, the more that you jump around and add this and add that and, and do this and do that, typically that's not a great idea. You know, stick to one set of rules. Uh, make sure you've proven to yourself before you put any money at risk in the market that it, that it works. And, um, you know, and then go, go from there. All right. Uh, yes, Tamar. Just um, yeah, ap absolutely. Just fresh quality levels. All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So here we go. So picking up where we left off a little bit yesterday, and I want to tie yesterday's market analysis into this. Here's our little supply uh, people and demand people, and the middle. Right. Before we get into the chart. Make sure, um, and I know everybody kind of knows this. I just kind of want to bring us all back to basics, okay? Um, understand how, you know, how any market on the planet works, right? And I know we kind of know all this, but let's just revisit the the, the the fundamental basics, the principles that all of this, everything we do here is, is based off of. Um, where does price spend most of its time in this, uh, this this picture here, right? This diagram, it spends most of its time in the middle, somewhere in the middle, some variation of the middle, right? I would I would suggest, and I could be wrong, that at least ninety five percent of the time price spends in this middle gray or white space here, okay? Relative balance, two and a half percent of the time. It's, it spends up here near supply. The other two and a half percent of the time, it maybe spends down here at demand or something like that. Okay. And now why is that? Right. Tomorrow we're going to go over our stock portfolio and you'll see, you know, we'll, we'll revisit some of the entries and, you know, how long did price stay down, stay down there in the March lows, you know, that the day when uh, prices hit our entry points, it stayed there for, I don't know. Didn't even seem like a few hours, right? It seemed like it was very short. But, and even some of the, um, you know, all the trades that, it, that Jasmine's uh, shared with you here. Same thing. Why is that? OK. 
Okay, understand what supply and demand are. It's competition to sell, for example, at supply. That competition to sell up here, right, with the absence of enough buyers, forces price back down to the middle. Competition to buy at demand forces price back to the middle. Okay? All right, so that competition really eliminates itself and, again, always is forcing price back to the middle. And it's our job to share with you what those pictures look like. All right, so yesterday was a great example. Remember the theme yesterday morning was um, uh, fresh levels are higher. There were some supply zones we took a look at. But remember, they had a different color code because they were not high probability levels, okay? Uh, they were not levels that we'd be interested in taking because, and they're right here. See these in the uh, kind of the right, upper right part of the chart inside the gray space here? Okay, those are two supply zones people were looking at yesterday. And what we were pointing out was, look, they're, they're there and structure-wise, they probably meet the criteria, but location-wise, they don't qualify because they're um, uh, they're in in the middle here, and the fresh levels are higher. Okay, and that's what we'll talk about in a minute. And Jasmine will take that much deeper and go into multiple equity index markets for that. Right. So here's our S and P supply zone uh, up here above this uh, above the white space here, the middle. And look at all of the. So when you look at these supply zones here, look at the trading activity to the left. See that? Okay. See that? See all this activity to the left? What does this uh, activity represent? What does all of this trading activity represent? Does it represent filled orders or unfilled orders? Right? And as I as I put on the bottom, filled orders okay, facilitate price movement, allow price to move, right? Because it's a lack of unfilled orders. Unfilled orders or fresh supply and demand zones cause prices to turn. Okay. Does this make sense? And you know, and part of the reason to go over those levels is because structure-wise, they look perfect. If you just say, "Here's the picture of a level I'm going to take," that look, markets are made up of supply and demand, right? Every every trade you have is be, every, every trade that that a market has, right? The millions and millions of trades that take place today, it's all because of supply and demand, right? At the little micro levels, you're going to have supply and demand levels all over the all over the place. Which ones? would we want to take? We want to take the, the ones that represent a significant supply and demand imbalance. Okay. So we have the picture that represents that. Now let's focus on location. Where do we want to see those? Right. Okay. You could have the best looking, you know, supplier demand zone in a terrible location. And as I'm going to show you next, um, well, let's just go there. Is everybody pretty clear on, on, on the picture here? And this is uh, this is the picture of the market as of this morning, and um, again, just wanted to share that with you. But let's go to let's go to our next uh, little screenshot here. So again, you could have the picture of the best supplier demand zone, structure wise, and uh, in a terrible location, like I'm going to show you here, and it's not going to work. You could have a so-so looking supplier demand zone in a fantastic location, and it's going to work great. Okay. It's like if you have, um, you know, you could have a tear down house on a beach and it's probably worth a few million dollars. You could have an amazing brand new, you know, 4,000 square foot palace in the middle of the desert. Uh, good luck trying to find someone to buy that. Right. Same thing here and actually same mindset. So if that helps at all. Let's take a look. This is all about structure and location. And we also find that, before I go on, have you ever, um, how many times have you seen like the best looking supplier demand zone and it doesn't work? And other times you might see a supplier demand zone that that eh, kind of looks a little iffy, not great, and, and it works perfect, okay? This is why, all right? Okay, so it's all about structure and location. And um, so, when we look at uh, when we look at the chart here, 
Okay. Now, take a look at the two zones in the middle. Perfect looking supply and demand zone structure wise, right? Perfect looking supply and demand zone structure wise. But they both fail, right? Price goes right through these levels like they weren't even there. Why? Look to the left. They're in the middle, okay? Now, this whole picture right here of supply and demand and this and all the this trading activity to the left this whole thing was taken out of this area right here that i'm showing you on the right and again what does this picture represent all of this trading activity we went over this yesterday it represents filled orders or the middle okay we want to look for supply and demand zones like these outside of this area now when you look at, for example, these two supply zones up here, they look just as good as this one here, but they work perfect. Why? Because of location. Now, I think again, a, 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 an important thing for anyone that's trying to get this is, do you have a razor sharp focus on just that? Mastering structure and location of supply and demand, right? And again, um, you know, this is just, think of me as, as, as the messenger, right? I mean, this is just how I'm just, I'm not coming to you with, Hey, I've got this crystal ball and, and based on, you know, this moving average and this, you know, this 64 tick chart and this, this, and this, uh, here's what happens. All I'm sharing with you is how the markets really work. And, um, um, you know, nobody owns supply and demand. Adam Smith, I don't think, has a patent for supply and demand. Great guy. Um, fantastic. How old is his book? How old, how old is The Wealth of Nations? Was that like three, 300 years old? I'm not sure. Uh, but there are a couple pages in that book that uh, almost say the exact same things that I'm saying here. Supply and demand is what it is. It's how any and all markets work. Um, but the key is to have a razor sharp focus on really what's going on behind the scenes, that supply and demand equation, that relationship that's going on behind the scenes, right? That is responsible for the creation of this picture of candles or lines or, or what have you, right? Does this make sense? Hopefully it's helpful. I'm kind of, I know I'm kind of keep, uh, uh, repeating myself, but I think you get the point. Okay. Um, and you know, Jasmine's a, Jasmine's a funny example. I hope she doesn't get mad for what I'm about to say, but you can come at her with some pretty elaborate strategies that maybe some of you even understand and know about out there. She probably wouldn't know what you're talking about. Okay. Cause she has this razor sharp focus on just this. Okay. And, uh, all right, let's keep going. One more thing here, and then um, and then we'll dive into uh, we'll move forward. Okay. So we looked at part of this picture yesterday, just the middle. Okay, supply, demand, relative balance. Now let's add to it. Okay, and again, it all comes down to answering two questions: Where is price going to turn, and where will it move to? And as we, as we keep saying, right, unfilled orders or supply and demand, and not just any supply and demand, significant supply and demand, okay? A significant supply and demand imbalance causes prices to turn. Filled orders or the lack of supply and demand allow prices to move, right? Facilitate quick price movements. Now, when it comes to, you know, how do you, op how, you, know, how do you operate? In this in this whole thing, here's a here's some suggestions over on the right. Obviously, when price is in the middle, we probably want to do nothing. Or if you're in a position, you're hopefully getting paid, right? If you bought at demand and price is moving up to supply, that that's my point there. Okay, but probability, the odds of price turning, is always going to be highest up in supply down near demand, right? We want to look for 
structure structure wise supply and demand levels right down here at demand up here at supply so obviously this is where we want to be a buyer this is where we want to be a seller okay now notice the profit targets they're they're put where they're they're the the placement of those is there for a reason okay for example if you buy if if we buy down here at demand notice the profit target for that long position is before we get into the significant supply area of supply. Does everybody see that? Just like if you take a short position or maybe you're, you know, protecting your portfolio with some puts and all that, the uh, exit or target for that, the ideal space place is before we get to the, uh, you know, deep discount, significant demand areas of demand. Does that make sense? Now, why would we want to do that? Because if you bought into a market, you know, as a day trade, as a long-term investment or anything in between, if you bought into a market, whoops, um, ideally we want to sell before we get to the significant area of supply because there's competition to sell there. If we're going to sell, right, we have a better chance of selling when there's still some competition to buy, not when there's competition to sell. Does that make sense? Increasing your probability of success. Right. And this is all just based off the, you know, the, the, the laws of supply and demand that we all know about. I'm just sharing with you how this works in financial markets and what this looks like on a price chart. Okay. Philip's asking a good question. I just happened to glance at the chart. So again, I apologize if I'm missing other comments or questions. Um, but uh, how do you determine how much before supply or demand? Typically, what we've used is, um, you know, something before that. So you might have, you, and that's your choice, right? Maybe your rule in your trading or investing plan is 80% before that opposing level or 85% or 90% or pick what you want. If you live in, if you're Chinese, maybe it's 88%. I don't know. Eights are a big number in China, right? I'm kind of kidding, but you get the point. So um, the, you know, 80% of the available profit zone, right? So let's say the actual distance from supply to demand is 10 points, right? You would put your profit target at eight, if you want to increase your winning percentage or, or help that, you would bring that number down. If you want to go for a bigger move, but you're willing to decrease your winning percentage, that number goes up. Okay. All right. And sorry if I got that eight thing wrong. Um, I just, uh, but anyway. All right, let's keep going. Today's focus, and then I will uh, turn things over to Jasmine here. Okay. Is um, so now that we're you know the markets have moved up as uh, and yesterday you know we were, there was all that good news we went over that in the morning you know the uh, uh, vaccine and and with the Fed and and Europe and all that stuff you know, all this all this uh, stimulus everything else great news for the markets and um, because we were not near fresh significant supply the markets pushed a little bit higher. So the theme coming in today is some equity index markets are nearing supply levels above. Not all, but some of them are. And, you know, secondly, we're always going to look at the three or four key inverse equity index markets. And I know Jasmine talks about those often. Um, you know, the first thing we look for is if the equity index markets are nearing supply, are the inverse markets nearing demand? Well, when, when we look today, um, they were nearing demand, but they were still inside ranges. And some of those demand zones were still inside ranges. So um, if we looked and they were nearing fresh quality demand zones in the right location, uh, that would be an extremely high probability event. We don't have that today. Um, we may have that a little bit later today or tomorrow, and that's okay. Doesn't, doesn't change, um, you know, it's fine. It is what it is, right? We just deal with what we have to deal with. What evidence um, do we have to deal with? And, and we move forward. All right. So I'm I know I'm taking up uh, quite a bit of your time here. 
this guide, uh, since we do have two more um, things to, to update on this, to add to this, and we'll add that today and share it with you. I'll share it with you tomorrow. Um, in the interest of time, I think I'll just turn it over to Jasmine here. And, and these are more for, you know, th these are just as much to learn about everything as they are to, uh, you know, to just help you, you know, which is a quality level and, and which is not. Having said all that, let me turn it over to Jasmine and she'll walk you through uh, um, a bunch of the major markets. And then again, don't forget tomorrow, we're going to do a big uh, uh, update to the, the portfolio. And we'll cover news and price, that relationship that so many people get wrong. And there is Dennis Whitworth. How you doing, Dennis? Great to see you. All right, Jasmine, it's all yours. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? My bad. Is that good, everybody? Is it still good? Nobody can hear me? Okay. Terrific. Sorry about that. That was my fault. I had an extra button. I'm not good with instructions. So I like visuals. I'm not good with instructions. <laughs> well, you know, that this is a learning thing, you know. I show you the charts and you got to sit there and, you know, like pretend what I'm saying. So this way you're learning more. Right? Trying to figure it out yourself. If I show it to you and then you say, well, she's doing this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I was just saying that we came up to the gap overnight. We got the two uh, levels above. We've mentioned those levels before you know, numerous times. And um, now uh, this is this is what we have. Uh, we do have some overnight uh, uh, supply levels up above. Uh, however, uh, we did not, what I was showing you in the other one was that uh, we did not uh, break, we did not break below uh, this uh, overall demand. 
So I uh, just realized that we haven't taken out any demand if you want to try some of these uh, overnight areas. So you can see right up above, you do have a bit of a 10 minute area. So you could keep that you know, on a watch. But I believe the uh, better probability area is going to be the one that's going to be above the overnight high can act as a bit of a trap, especially in such a strong uh, move that we've had in the last uh, few days. Okay. All right. So that's on the S&P. On the demand side, let's take a look. We still have some... Uh, Fairly uh, close demand, so let's go take a look at them. Uh, you can see right down below this area, you can probably see a little bit better on the smaller time frame, uh, 29, 20, 29, 13. Of course, we are uh, pretty high up, so uh, just take it for as it is made during the day session, uh, but it is a small time frame within this uh, pretty uh, big move up. There's also a 15 minute that's lower down that we uh, have missed on the way up. And of course, that's coming down at 2806 to 2799. Uh, all right. Don't forget too, if you take a look at the spy in the queues, you are going to have open gaps. I believe we went through that yesterday. So we don't need to go through that today. But uh, with the open gaps, you can see where the really uh, the fresher levels I kind of put up in there. The gaps uh, can work fine for you, but they are levels inside of the futures market that have been tested once before in the overnight. So the, uh, the, the part of the area that's fresher is going to be a little bit lower down. So just so you know, if we should come back, fill the gap uh, that a lot of this area has been tested um, on the way up. And then the lower area is the one that we um, have not been to. Uh, on to the uh, NASDAQ. NASDAQ, what we have is uh, the 240. That's also above current price. Um, it also has, so if you take a look at the S&P and the NASDAQ, they both basically came back to its gap area and filled it. And then we have these two levels uh, right up on top of each other. And so I saw the, the question, you know, what, what happens if um, you, you go on to make all-time highs? So, you know, Sam has mentioned numerous times the, the equity markets are designed uh, to go up over time. That's that's just the way they're made. And you can see that uh, you just continue to buy pullbacks. You know, you buy the pullback, buy a pullback, buy a pullback. Of course, you get a much bigger correction when you have uh, news such as we had. And so it moves down to a fresh daily uh, or weekly level. But you can see since that time, it is a lot of it is, you know, buy pullback, buy pullback, buy pullback, and be extra careful uh, on the supply side, right? So you can see every time. So if it continues to make new high, you're going to continue to do that. Uh, what the difference is, yeah, once the, you get into correction mode again, they're going to start taking them out again. But then you should be making money on the, all the way on the way up that is not going to uh, matter if you if you get stopped out on one trade near near the highs right but you don't want to be the last person to, to get in but that's what you just continue to do the strategy works in in um different environments you just got to know how to play it in the different environments right so even these you know these are nearing um the highs right now all these markets have continued to uh hold uh demands and no, uh, you know, opposing demand has, has really been broken with that. On the uh, demand side, all right, we have a five, wait, actually, we have 30. Uh, actually, the five is a little bit closer. Let me just see. I think I have a 15 that's a little bit closer. Okay, so you can see a 15 minute right down below here at 92.28 to 92.14. This one is an overnight. That's why it's in a circle. 
Uh, but it did, uh, you know, create a little move out. Uh, we couldn't quite get back there. So I still put it in here as a bit of demand. And uh, on the... I believe that's only if we have to go way back down um, to to the area. And again, just like the uh, S and P, you are going to have a gap as well. And also, I put in there uh, where the fresh level is in terms of, as you can see, a lot of it's been tested on the move up to the gap, and so the fresh level is really coming down a little bit closer. Uh, to this 220.50 to 220 uh, should we come back. All right. Yeah, so this is what it is when um, you're trying to do, you know, so that's why I would say you always got to figure out what what exactly you're you're uh, trying to do. You know, you if you want the easy profit, you just take it at the first opposing uh, demand zone. A lot of times, what happens if you're looking for reversal, though, uh, if you move it to break even or you know try to take some profit before that, a lot of times you're not going to be in for the bigger move. Because if you really take a look at some reversals, uh, they do take could be three times in, into a level before it actually gets the biggest move out. So, you know, you got to decide on yourself what's what you're trading. Um, what we like to do is just put it into two different accounts, right? The short term trading is for one and the longer term is for another. This way, you're not, it, it, it's very easy to, to mix up your head. And that's a problem I had at the very beginning where I was like, well, you know, short term's great. Why can't I just move it on into a uh, long term and do the same thing? Well, you can't because, you know, one time it's going to hit target and the other time it's not going to hit target before you would have got target if you were doing short term. But now all of a sudden you're trying to change the long term. And so now your trading becomes all flip flopped upside down where you were doing fine before. But now because you're trying to, you know, be... I guess greed is the word you want to call it, or just try to be great at everything. And, you know, you can, you can do it. It's just that I wouldn't mix it because when you mix it, that's where I feel like uh, that confusion comes in. You, the more you can make yourself clear, you know, make yourself clear, have a plan, set the plan in place and, and leave it alone. You know, that that's, that's going to be the best way that you can do it. Once you start doing a lot of, you know, let me adjust this, adjust that while you're in the trade or, you know, through the out your plan. That's where it all um, it gets a little bit rough. All right. So you can see the Russell up above. Now, this area, the only difference with the Russell with the other markets, the other markets you can see is moving to a new um, uh, new overall uh, new area. But you can see the Russell's not really. So this is still within um, this uh, overall last drop, but because it is the been the weaker market and it should line up with the, uh, with the S and P and the NASDAQ. So that's why I'm still leaving it up here up at the, uh, 1355 to 1363. Uh, okay. Uh, on the NASDAQ, what are you talking about? The supply areas? have to open it up a little bit and move it down. Yeah, looks like 9552, 9584, 9605, 9644. Okay. Yes, so you definitely want to, the stop always has to go above the distal if it's a supply, below the distal if it's a uh, demand, right? You don't want your stop right at the place. If it's too large for you, you can either cut it down to micro or if you want to wait for 
smaller time frame to form you know either way you want to do it but if it's too large for you you can't risk it then then don't risk it you know the worst thing to do is kind of take the zone but try to chop the zone up into pieces so if you're saying oh i want to i want this zone but i really can't afford it so let me just put the stop in the middle of the zone because that's you know that's kind of just unnecessarily um stopping yourself out so you know, always know your risk before you go into any of these. Uh, did I go over the demand side? Let me go back to Russell. Okay, so the 30 minutes uh, still lower down at this uh, 1245, 1234. You can see this is in that little bit of a dark uh, in the middle of the range uh, as well as the... 15 minute. I didn't think I, the only thing I made with this one is it, it is an overnight. So you do have an overnight that's right down below that just barely, just barely missed. That's coming in at 1278 to 1274. Let's take a look at the YM. So the YM uh, because it is uh, more dealt with less, you know, 30 stocks instead of 500, it can be a mover uh, more so. But let's take a look at the 60 minute that's right up above right now as well. So you can see here you have an overnight level and a level right on top of that. That's coming in at 26.083. It goes all the way up to the 26.29. You do have some five minute demands down below, and that's coming in at 24205, uh, 24170, down to uh, 24166. Um, the actual, so. And, you know, remember where Sam came from, right? The floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Everything on there is order flow, order flow, order flow. So his mind has nothing else but what he what what he's teaching you and telling you is what is in his mind. I mean, he can speak for himself, but uh, it, it's, it's just from those are the years that he spent there and, and everything is where the stacks of orders by buyers and sellers. There's no, you know, RSI on there, MACD on there. I mean, it's just pure buying and selling where, who has the most. So, you know, once trading starts, we could talk about this in another time, but I'll, I'll switch to my uh, page here. And you can see where we have our uh, tool with the uh, Veritas and also uh, the side and screener. This will tell you uh, which ones are coming closer to you uh, in terms of supply or demand. And then, uh, you know, take the trades. And then also you can see what's opposing to as well. So we could talk about that in another time, but let's get on more with the charts. All right, let's take a little bit look at the DAX. All right, so for the DAX, you can see, like I said, they um, had a pretty decent news overnight, did take a Little of a little bit of a move down, but let's take a look what's now uh, above current price on the 240. So on the 240, you can see that we are getting a little bit closer to the uh, gap here. Just missed a little bit last time, but you can see on the new push up, it's going to take you into these two areas here on the 11.398 to 11.805. This market, because it has been overall driving things overnight, so it is good to look at. On the 
on the five minute, we have down below uh, 10,861. Two levels on top of each other that goes down to the 10,822. Okay, uh, so that's on the DAX. Now, yesterday, um, if you remember, you know, we, we were looking at different things and uh, how we went into some of the brown boxes and said, well, you know, the brown boxes aren't as good, but it, they can, you know, we'll, we'll take a look. But then as I continue to go on, if you remember, we started going into the bonds and the yen. Then we started seeing, okay, We've tested this close demand, but now as we tested this close demand, we have formed some new supply. So now it's suggesting that we're going to come up and hit um, supply and then and, and then move down, which is then suggesting that equ equity markets is going to move up. So we particularly saw that with the yen. But then we saw with with most of the uh, inverse markets, meaning bonds, gold, you know, so. Uh, so it is always good to, so now you can see today with the bonds, we actually are still continuing to fall and we did create, uh, some, uh, 15 minute, uh, demand, uh, supplies here. Uh, we did take a bounce off of the daily, but now you can see we started to uh, fall back down. Let's take a look at uh, the uh, where the five-minute demands are. Where is the five-minute demands? Oh, nope. Don't worry about five minute. 240. All right, so 240 is down. Mm, nothing too fresh, though. Interesting. Actually, let's go look at TY. That'll be better. All right, so we could see here with TY. So this is what started to happen with TY, right? We are inside of the range, this type of range right here. Now we have formed, now you can remember that we have hit this area. We have moved out of there. So this is an area that's been hit already. Now we started to move, move out of the uh, zone. And now we have created a new supply coming in at 139.09 to 139.14. We are still very much inside of a inside of a range. You can see it needs to take out uh, this tested uh, demand first before it starts to uh, continue to move down. But you can see on the sixty, so you can see on the sixty. Once we start to get a little bit lower, we're going to come back down into this into the retest area. So that's what I will look out for. If the, I would say if, if anything that's causing a little bit of uncertainty with this right now is that when I take a look at the inverse markets, because everything's been in so much of a range, there is no clear cut fresh demand. Whereas the equities, we have some decent supply. So now the question is, which one is kind of going to win out? You know, is that is that is that supply going to hold out a little bit better than than um, these demands? Because you can see what the issue is in terms of trying to line it up. Now the bonds can move a lot slower and all, but what I've just noticed with overall uh, with the um, the inverses is there's not a clear cut fresh. Uh, a fresh demand, as you can see right here up close. Further out, yeah. I mean, further out, we have it way down here, but that's, you know, it, it'll take the bonds uh, quite a few uh, time to get there. And that would, that would send the equity markets way up higher. So um, that's, um, yeah, that's the only thing with um, coming into a little bit of today. 
All right, so that's on, I don't think we need to go over US, so I think the US is fine. All right, so let's go on to, uh, let's actually go on to crude oil. So crude oil, of course, it's been a market, uh, you know, very strong off of the bottom. So I believe that if we find some supply in equities, we should be able to find some supply inside of crude oil as well. So we do know that uh, we do know that the the gap in the higher area is going to be still your better area. But we've been through that a couple of times uh, for, you know, inside of this uh, 41 to the 44. However, if I'm trying to match it up a little bit with the equities, what I do see is we have a couple of, uh, let's go into here. All right. So you can see right now, uh, right, we have the uh, overnight high pretty close to yesterday's high, 32.91 to 32.10. And we have the overnight low coming in at 31.13. Now, it took a look right up above just to see if equities come into a little bit of supply of what we're going to be coming into. And what I see is this. Oh, my lines got a little messed up. So the first area you're going to hit. I wouldn't consider it as great uh, because it's been to it quite some time. But once you come up a little bit higher, you're going to have a couple of overnight levels. So it may not be areas that I just, you know, straight out put out there, but I'm definitely going to watch it to see if there is going to be a hold. And and um, then I'll use the uh, tool and then try to uh, figure out if I want to um, uh, short inside of that area. So then you can see um, up above that's the, 34.75 that goes up to the 35.60. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I see that comment about um, in if if you say. All right, so keep that in mind. Let me just finish with this thought on the crude oil, and and then there is of course your. Uh, your 30 minutes demand. What I did notice is this whole area is kind of coming in line with your uh, 180 here. So, you know, you can see on a move down, down to these lower areas, that's going to be your, your 180 zones if it, get, it should get down to the 28.62. That's it, we were able to continue to hold some of the close fives. But if you see where... You, like you're saying about uh, being starting to get uh, confused, it's because say in a market like this, where see this is what starts to happen, right? Oh. Right in a market like this, and a lot of times what happens is so when we come in, we're just kind of looking at um, possibly like. Oh, maybe a 60 minute, right? So then you're just coming in, kind of looking at things like this. So everything looks, oh, okay, we're uptrending. Oh, we're downtrending, you know, and you don't know what you're, where it's going and you're trying to take it based on, oh, okay, I see it moving up. I see it moving down. But meanwhile, all it's doing is this. And that's when you start to get, you know, chopped up a bit, right? Because you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's going up. Oh, okay, it's going down. No, it's going up. No, it's going down. So, um, you know, if you're a range player, it's great. But if you're trying to follow some kind of trend, that's where you get trouble. So that's why you have to understand, you know, what space you're in. And like I said, you know, if you want to take chances in it, um, you can just try to lower your risk. But inside of the bonds, it's, it's pretty hard uh, to lower your risk. So if you're really not liking it, just I would just say stay out of the bonds if it's not in an ideal situation uh, to trade. Uh, let's take a little look at gold because it is hard to narrow down your 
risk inside of um oh no wrong chart let me go to the, the other one wrong chart okay here we go all right so gold on the bigger picture so you can see with all of the uh, Fed stimulus and, and all, gold is uh, remaining to be uh, very strong and still continues to be. You can see where it is on the daily. And I wouldn't be surprised if it wants to you know, go back and go up there. It's, it's basically at this area here where this is the area that's been tested a few times up at this uh, almost 1800 mark to 1820. And then this other uh, zone supply uh, is right kind of mixed in with this one. And this one you can see starts at 181870 up to 1850 on the on the daily. So this lower one, you can see we have hit it once, twice, I mean, it is a daily. It, it can work again. Um, three. So if it comes back now, it's actually going to be fifth time back. So it is quite a bit. It hasn't gone halfway into it yet, uh, but it is going to be about fifth time back if it should hit up back into there right now. Uh, all right. On the demand side, of course, uh, we never got back down to the 240 yet. You could keep that in mind, the 1647, 1635. Uh, on the supply side right now, on the 30 or... No, not the 30. Okay, so what we have is this right now. Uh, again, it's a little bit more of that overnight mixed with i believe the little yesterday's move yeah overnight oh, no it's actually yesterday's move so you can see what has happened here this one is retested up at the 1752 1755 and this one up above as uh 1758 to 1762 so anytime with these that you start to have a pretty decent fall and it didn't really break demand uh, I would still pay attention to the opposing demand um, as it comes in just because we weren't able to uh, quite break that uh, a demand. Yeah. On the five minute side of demand, uh, do we have actually, I don't think so. Wait, let me go back and take a look here. Oh yeah, I think it was, yeah. I know where it was. Uh, yeah. Mm. So you can see below, wait, let me go back there. I think it might've been back there. Might've been underneath. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so that was a close area, but this one here. So this area down below, it is an overnight at the 1720, uh, 90 to 1718. I don't particularly like where it's located because it's a little bit too close to the, bit, the pivot for me. You know, sometimes with the pivot, they like to stop you out and, and such. That's the only thing that I don't like about it. Um, the, pro, the pro of it is it is below the previous low here. So it can be a little bit of a trap play. So it'll be another one of those. Uh, I'll probably wait uh, till prices come and, uh, and then use my little um, tool here and, um, and then see if it gives me a, a signal to, uh, to buy uh, with, within there again. So that's what I'll do with that one, uh, given that situation. Uh, all right, let me go back to... All right, so gold, let's go into the dollar. So the dollar was a little tricky yesterday because I believe we didn't, uh, well, I didn't take into account the stock market. Um, and we should have factored that in because the dollar does become, uh, the dollar does become a bit of a, um, 
you know, it's a safe haven when the stock market goes down and it's, you know, the reverse when uh, it's not. So that's the one thing that kind of uh, threw things a little bit off with things. But now you can see uh, we we do have to look for some demand, even though it's still inside of a very big range. So again, like I said, these inverses just are not at great areas. So, um, you know, so I would still be be careful in general, but um, let's uh, let's go take a look anyway. So the dollar here, we have a uh, 240. So you can see right now it's coming back to retest this previous area that we've had for demand for a while. If it starts to break, we're gonna have some new supply. So actually that's still going to be still a little bit more uh, bullish for the uh, dollar, but right now we're sitting up at this area. Down below, we have a overnight zone that we have not tested. And so you can see that that's uh, coming in 99, 18, 97, 94. So that area we have not tested yet. On the uh, 30 minute. So this is, as you can see in that brown box because it's in the middle, um, you know, everything is just completely ranging. So sometimes the middle is just, that's what it is. Um, again, you're gonna have to watch for if, the, if demand kind of forms against it. And then on the uh, 30 minute demand side, this one, we do have a gap. This is still gonna be overall within the range, but you can see that there is a little bit of a gap here coming in at 99.07 uh, to 98.96 here. Okay, so with that, you can see that the Euro was able to take out uh the close supplies right kid take out the close supplies and again these um you know i i can't really say the dollars out of anything yet they are going to have right now it's the same thing as before you know you you do have this 108.90 108.77 108.46 uh 108.34 uh just realize we're not out of the range inside of the dollar so uh you have to pick your targets accordingly with that. Uh, and the above area on the 240, you can see if we can get through all of this, we'll be up closer to that 112.78, but we still have to get through this next. So not nothing fresh up above, but nonetheless, they are areas that are still holding uh, because of that dollar being inside of a range. Now on the Aussie, Aussie is uh, seeing strength from the stock market and from the overall, just the virus thing going on in general, uh, the, the uh, vaccine, I mean. So they're seeing strength all the way around. I did see a little bit of uh, supply up above, above this 240 right now that um, as with anything else, hasn't really broken through uh, demand yet, so you just gotta just gotta pick your still your targets a little carefully with the with it. But you can see too a little bit up above coming in at this sixty six uh, sixteen. So this is the futures market to sixty six thirty three. Uh, you can see this area. It is made during the the day. It's uh, actually not a bad. It's right this is a little bit more kiwi time but it's okay it's a little bit during it right at the end of the uh, u.s time and uh so you can see this zone um that's right above current price so i would keep that in mind and then of course above this uh pivot you're gonna have the 60 minute zone and the 60 minutes coming in at 67 17 60 6727 There is a little 5 minute demands coming in at 6498 to 6495 and 6490 to 6487 for the uh, spot market those same area numbers so I figure since these are different areas I'll give you them for spot market too as well this supply side is coming in here. The same area is 
6617-6630. Above the pivot 60 minute supply is you actually have a re regular level and a overnight level. So that's coming in at 6713 up to 6733. And, oh, I didn't do the five minute on this one. Mm, okay. All right, I didn't do the five. Okay. You do have some five minute levels though. You can see a little bit down below. You have some five minutes down in here and some five minutes down in here as well. But I don't want to give you specific numbers if I didn't um, mark them out specifically. Uh, let's take a look at BP. All right, so BP, like I said, you want to be, you know, yesterday we had so many cells on BP already off of the 240 coming all the way down. So said, you know, be a little bit careful on the sell side because of that. And you can see we did have a pretty decent bounce up. Now you do have a 30 minute demand at uh, 120, 133, 121.18. And you have a little five minute uh, demand also at 121.54 to 121.46. And then JY. So, JY, so if you remember too what we said about this. Uh, we had a little demand here. You can see price popped up, but then I said new supply form. So this is, this was suggesting that the stock market more than likely was going to try to uh, move to the upside. So you can see since then we started to fall. We are moving down into, oh, it looks like some, okay, some demand. We do have this. 30 minute here that's coming in at 9253, 9244. Uh, so, again, this can be one of those markets. I let me just see how it's arriving. Mm. It is arriving a little bit tricky right now because of the new supplies that it's formed. So that's probably another market that I am going to pull out my little handy little tool, wait for a little uh, show, and um, and then take it. That would be another one of those. Because then I want to see what's the opposing zone, that if what target I have against it. Uh, on the opposite look of the dollar yen, that's same area. So this is the same thing that I'm uh, kind of telling you with that too, where uh, you can see this whole area. So some of you are looking at this as a whole, like a 240 area. I'm just narrowing down to a 30 inside of there. So I'm going to take it a little bit more as um, uh, using the tool to take it. 108, 28, 108, uh, 40. Because that's kind of how it's arriving. Uh, okay, so that's good for uh, today. And uh, we will uh, see you all tomorrow. So great to see everybody. And um, take it, have a great trading day.